Hi, I'm Brian, and today I want to talk to you about feature flagging with LaunchDarkly and Visual Studio Code. So quick who I am, I'm a developer experience engineer at LaunchDarkly. Um, I do a lot of other stuff, like I wrote the Jamstack book for Manning, which just came out. If you're interested in Jamstack, I do a lot of Jamstack things. I have a Jamstack newsletter from Cooper Press. I'm also very active in the community. I run a community called CFE.dev that hosts a lot of free meetups that you can join. And if you're in the Orlando area, I run the Orlando Devs group, which is the biggest group in the area for developers. So um, that's it about me, but I wanna talk to you today about feature flags. Now, many of you may have already heard of feature flags, but there could be a bunch of you who have not actually used feature flags within an application. So I wanna give you a quick rundown of what feature flags are. Basically, this is a simple server-side flag. A feature flag wraps a piece of code and decides if that code runs or doesn't run. Um, if the flag is true, the code will run. If the flag is false, the code won't run. You could also do something client side where if the flag is true, the feature will show. If the flag is false, the feature won't show. That's the kind of basic logic behind a feature flag. It enables you to easily change whether if code will run and that way you can work on code without having to necessarily have that code running all the time. But you can do more than just simple on off boolean flags you can do string flags and number flags and json object flags that way you can pass configuration information and do multiple variations of flags and things like that so so you can do a lot more powerful things than just say yes or no run this code yes or no show this feature some of the ways that you can use flags to improve your development workflow is you want, this is a biggie, you can reduce merge conflicts by eliminating long running branches. So I can be working on a feature and actually even merge the, my, my code back into main uh, on a regular basis without necessarily con being concerned that that code is gonna run and cause problems for everybody else. It can be behind a flag and that way within the main branch it's not running in production it's maybe not even running on test it's only running locally for me i can test different scenarios without making code changes so i can pass values from a flag and see how this is going to work without having to go in and make manual code changes i can just go in and flip the flag or flip the variation and see what the effect is going to be I can control the availability of in-progress features to specific users, groups, and regions. This one is huge. I can basically then say, hey, this feature that I've been working on, I'm gonna only allow my our testing uh, team to test that in production. So they're the only ones who see it, um, or I'm gonna roll it out to a beta list of users, and they're the only ones who have access to it. You can do all kinds of targeting of features. Uh, a feature flags to particular users. It's a really, really powerful thing. I can do a progressive rollout of a feature to prevent any problems. So I can say only roll this feature out to 10%, 20%, so on, until I'm sure that everything is stable. And that way, if there's any problem, I can just turn the flag off, roll it back, which is the big, big thing. I can kill a prob problematic feature without having to do a full rollback or redeploy. I can just flip that flag and and the feature is turned off, problem solved. Uh, the other powerful thing here is that you can even give access to changing feature flags within LaunchDarkly, for instance, to team the product owner team. So that, that way you don't have to manually change things for them every time they want a feature turn on or off. So now that we kind of covered what feature flags are for and, and why you would want to use them, I do want to show how you're going to do this within Visual Studio Code. So let's jump in. Let's look at an example of using feature flags in an application. Uh, so I work as part of a team that maintains a super complex node application. You can see it here. I won't get into the architecture of it. It would take far, far too much time. So I've been assigned this task of adding the super secret new feature to my complex node application. So I've created a new branch and I'm ready to start developing my super secret feature. So let me go ahead and I'm going to add my new feature into my branch and I'm just going to do that. And okay, we've got, we've got my new feature there. It's showing. Now, what if I wanted to be able to test this feature being on or off? What if I wanted to be able to check this back into the main 
uh, main branch because it development's taking a long time and there's a lot of a lot of things to consider. So I want to be able to check it into the main branch and not have my branch get completely out of sync. What if I want to be able to test it so that specific users can see it in production and try it out or roll it out? All of those things are things where I would need to include a feature flag. So let me go ahead and I'm going to add a feature flag to this application, but I'm going to do it kind of the manual way right now. So I'm going to just go ahead here and I'm going to say, let show feature equal to false. So I'm going to add that there and I'm going to pass show feature here and I'm going to pass it as show feature. Then I'm going to go into my, let me, let me save that. I'm going to go into my index.jade and I'm going to actually change the way that we render this so that it only shows the feature if the feature is is enabled. So we're going to, oh, I'm going to have to fix the tabbing on that, save that. Now if I rerun this application, I actually should not show the feature because that's false. Now this works and I can, I could even probably better idea would be to move this into a config file rather than have it actually declared in the file itself. Um, but then every time I want to make a change to this, I actually have to redeploy the application and test it that way. Um, so this isn't going to work. I can't assign users to have access to it or think, things like that. So this, while this on a simple level for something like this might work on a more complex level, it's not going to work. Uh, it's not going to scale to do what it is I need it to do. So let's go ahead and move on to setting up uh, Launch Darkly instead of manual feature flags here. So I've got a brand new Launch Darkly project set up here. I don't have any flags or anything created yet, but um, it does have multiple environments. By default, the production and test environments are created, and you can connect each of your environments to your different environments in your development workflow. In this case, I want to create a new environment because I want an environment specifically for my local development so that that way when I flip flags um, on, on that environment, it's not affecting any other developers that are using flags or even that particular flag in any other environment. However, every every time I create a new flag, those flags are replicated across the different environments. That way we have the same flag across each environment. You don't have to go through creating it in each case. Um, I'm going to go to my account settings here. I'm going to go to projects. I'm going to create a new environment. I'm going to call it Brian's local. And I am just going to say create that. All right. So now I'm going to go back here and I should be able to see Brian's local here as an environment. Okay, great. So now I want to actually connect my application to this environment my, locally. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and copy the, the SDK keys so that I can use them. So I'm going to go command K and go copy SDK key. I need both the server and the client side key. So Here's the server key. You can't see it because it's private and I'm hiding it from you, but it is there, trust me. So I'm gonna place this other one here and save that. Okay, we've got those saved in our environment variables. So now the next thing we wanna do is create a flag that's gonna be that show feature flag. So let's go ahead and create show feature. Obviously, when you're creating real flags, show feature would not be the most descriptive, but for this case, it works. So I'm going to go ahead. I need it for the client side as well, and I'm going to go ahead and save it. So now the show feature flag exists. Targeting is off, meaning that it's going to serve the default rule, which right now is false. Well, sorry, it's going to serve the, the t targeting off rule, which is false. The default rule is true if it's on. Now that I have the SDK keys set up in my environment variables, I'm ready to start using Launch Darkly in my application. The first thing, since this is server side code, the first thing I need to do is I'm going to include the node server SDK. Uh, and that's that's the proper SDK for if you're working on server side node application. I'm also going to use .env to be able to pull in those environment variables within my application here. The next thing I need to do is I need to initialize the SDK client. So within here, I'm going to go ahead and say um, 
create the SDK client. I'm going to pass it my LaunchDarkly SDK key, and then I need to wait to make sure it's initialized before I can start using it. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and replace my show feature with the, the current hard-coded flag. I'm going to replace that with my flag coming from launch darkly instead i'm going to get that show feature flag if you remember the key for that was show dash feature i am passing it an anonymous user now within launch darkly every flag call it has a user associated with it that way you can target users for right now i'm just passing an anonymous user everybody's going to be the same um, but you would want to configure that if you're going to be able to target users and I'm going to console log it just so that we can see it to make sure it's working. So if I save this and now I run it again, we should actually get the same result from the application here because my flag is false. But if we go here, we should see that we do get false returned here. Okay, so what if I then stop this application? I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to my show feature flag and I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to save that save those changes so now when I rerun this application or actually I could have just refreshed it to be honest if I now the feature shows up so I can go back turn it off save it reload the application features gone and so on so all right, so that's all great, but I actually don't want to have to go all the way out to the launch darkly dashboard to have to change flags every time I want to flip one back and forth and do my local testing here as I work on my new feature. Um, I want to be able to do that all from within Visual Studio Code. So thankfully I can. I'm just going to search for the launch darkly extension here and I'm going to install that. So it's now installed, but it's not configured yet. So in order to configure it, I need to go here and into my account settings authorization and I need to create an access token to be able to use this. I'm going to call this token for here, build demo. Um, in order to do that, I need an inline policy. There is documentation that shows you how to create this inline policy. I'm just going to paste it in here, go to the advanced editor, paste in the proper permissions for this, for this uh, token, and then create that token. I need to copy it. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go command shift P and I'm going to go configure token. I'm going to enter a new access token, paste that in there. You can see it finds my project, the build demo project. It finds my environment, Brian's local environment here. I'm going to set that for all my workspaces and save it. So right now it's not showing, so I'm going to go ahead and do this and just reload my window and we should get it so that it sees all the flags in just a moment. There we go, there are my flags. So I can see details about the flags. I can see the different variations. I, I have the full list of flags here. I can see what the settings are. Um, I can go ahead and see the defaults and all kinds of different things like that, even make some changes here. So as of right now, that flag is true. As you can see, the feature is showing. It shows green here. So I want to go ahead and toggle that flag off from within the application. You can see it changed here. And if I go to my application, because it doesn't need to reload, it's already showing. So I can do all of my testing without really ever having to leave my environment and go to launch darkly and flip flags there and go through the whole process of approving that and so on. I can just do it straight from my local development environment, making it really, really easy to integrate flags into your whole local development workflow. Clearly, I barely touched the surface of what you can do with feature flags and what Launch Darkly can do, but there's only so much I can cover in such a short period of time. So I want to leave you with some resources that you can use to go from here. Uh, we do have a ton more SDKs. I was only talking about the JavaScript client SDK and the Node SDK. We have 20 plus SDKs for mobile, front end, back end, everything you can think of. Um, you check those out on the documentation. Uh, if you want to look at the documentation specifically about the Visual Studio Code extension, you can do so also in the Launch Darkly docs under integrations. Uh, I wrote a blog post all about this that will just walk you through the steps I showed in setting everything up to work with Visual Studio Code and Launch Darkly locally. Um, you can check out that blog post on the Launch Darkly blog, or if you prefer to get 
you're training via video. I also did a short five minute version of, of that um, as a video on YouTube, but that's on our Launch Darkly YouTube channel. You can check that out there. I also am happy to answer your questions. So you can always send them to me at Remote Synth on Twitter. My DMs are open or feel free to email me at brinaldi at launchdarkly.com. I, I hope you go forward with using feature flags and you find them as powerful as I do and work with them locally in your Visual Studio Code environment. Thanks, bye.